The Ducks go to a backup plan against the Devils. With LaMichael already banged up, down goes Darren Thomas in the second half. But Oregon hardly missed a beat to win their 20th in a row at Odson. The Beavers were trying to be Bronco Busters in Corvallis. Mendenhall's Cougars were in town, and they were living the life of Riley as the BYU signal caller had a field day and the Cougars fed off OSU miscues. In the Palouse, the Cougars hope to measure up to the Stanford standard, but the Cardinal was having none of it as it rolled to a school record. On Montlake, the price was right. Over and over and over again, as the Huskies stayed undefeated in the Pac-12. USC made themselves at home in Cal's home away from home on Thursday night, and the Utes headed for the Big East and headed home with a win. Don't look now, but the Quack Mamba madness is spreading and things are beyond chippy. Hey, will you shut up? On this edition of Inside the Pack, right now. Thomas on the stamp, going to keep. Pitch it out, Margonis. Thomas going left, 10, Thomas 5, Thomas, touchdown Oregon. Anthony Thomas dead. The Black Mamba strikes. A true freshman comes up big for the Ducks as two veterans were sitting out with injuries. Hello and welcome to this edition of Inside the Pack as we've hit the midway point of the season. I am Tom Ward, joined each week by Nick Krupke and our special guest this week, former Oregon defensive lineman Mark Schmidt. Schmidt, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, with Michael James nursing an injured elbow, Darren Thomas goes down. It was up to both... Anthony Thomas and Brian Bennett to keep this thing moving for the Ducks. Yeah, I think it's just a, it's it's kind of Oregon esque that uh, this this keeps happening, and new players step up every week, and uh, it's credit to Chip and his coaching staff to get these guys prepared and ready to go. Yeah, Kenyon Barner comes into this game, 171 yards, a 5.5 per carry average, not quite Lamichael James uh, stellar. We've seen him average like over 10 yards per carry in some games, but but Kenyon Barner, serviceable job in this game. Oh, absolutely, and it's just, again, young guys stepping up, doing what they've practiced to do over and over again. And the, the return of Cliff Harris I thought was kind of big in this game because he comes back, he gets the interception just before the half. That sort of vaulted Oregon into that second half with a big defensive play like that, and they get a touchdown right before the half. Yeah, Cliff, Cliff's presence on the field is exactly what makes it happen, and Cliff uh, brings a lot of energy that those guys – really uh, live off of them, feed off of them, and get them energized. And Nick and Corvallis, the Beavers, with a winnable game yet again. They lose by 10. They turn the ball over four times, and they let Riley Nelson just look like Steve Young reincarnated with his runs and his left-handed throws and just picking them apart. Yeah, the Beavers, again, just a really tough team to kind of figure out where we last couple of weeks we saw some progress. Now you regress. You put it on the turf twice in the third quarter, three turnovers in that frame in a row, a couple of bad picks on the day for Sean Manning. He gave up 499 total yards. Defense banged up. You lose five guys during the game, but again, it's boy, you never quite know exactly what Beaver team is going to come. They're one and five, but at some point, they still can probably beat a lot of teams in the pack, but they just haven't proved it yet. They could. Could that being would be the, the operative key word. word. There, yeah. And if they don't beat the Cougars right. next week, I mean, it's a tough road. It, it is a tough road down the stretch. But let's think. Let, let's get things going with this week's show and. With LaMichael James nursing an injured elbow, the Ducks knew they wouldn't have the services of the nation's leading rusher against the Sun Devils, but Oregon had been very good at plugging in replacements and keeping things moving in the right direction. Kenyon Barner filled in for the Ducks as they went for their 20th consecutive win at Autzen Stadium and a stadium record 60,055 on hand. After Barner fumbled on the Ducks' first possession, Brock Osweiler, great read, great feed. Jarrell Robinson in the front corner of the end zone. 20-yard score make it 7-0 Arizona State, but Oregon came back after a 15-yard penalty on Fontez Perfect. Darren Thomas pitches to DeAnthony Thomas. The Quack Mamba explodes off the edge. We like to call him that on this show. 16-yard score tied at 7, and Osweiler basically did what he wanted to in the first half. Great catch and balance by Mike Willey. Beats Cliff Harris, 25-yarder. 14-7 ASU, 291 yards passing from Osweiler. Second quarter, Oregon got back to the quick strike. DT to LT. Lavagier, 2 and a lays out in the end zone. 28-yard TD pass and catch. It's even again at 14. Still in the second, the Ducks' second mistake. Thomas picked off by Shelley Lyons. A 20-yard return to the 
Oregon 21, but the Ducks held the Devils to a field goal at 17-14. Just before the half, Osweiler looking for Willie, who slips. The ball goes right into the waiting arms of Cliff Harris, his first pick of the season, and he's bringing it out. Cliff with a big return out to the 50 to fumble. Coincidentally, did go out of bounds to Oregon, retained possession, and the Ducks then took advantage. Thomas to David Paulson, pulling it out of the sky and tiptoeing in the corner of the end zone. Oregon into the lead, heading into the locker room on the 12-yard grab, 21-17. Ducks, third quarter, and Duck fans saying, oh, not again. A week after LaMike went down, Darren Thomas gets injured, eerily similar to Dennis Dixon's injury in 2007, same part of the field. He eventually jogged off and went to the locker room with an apparent knee injury, and it looks stiff. He was done for the night. After ASU took the lead at 24-21, it's up to Brian Bennett. He hands off to Dat. DAT three-yard run, 28-24 Oregon, a 68-yard drive, but Bennett can red shirt, he can run too. The red shirt from Encino, picking up some steam, turns the corner and turns it on. That's a 36-yard gain. He's looking good, and Barner got the payoff. He strolls in from seven yards out. The drive, a minute and five seconds, and 88 yards is 35-24. Now, DT did walk back onto the field in a knee brace, apparently wanted to come back in, but Chip said no way. Ducks seventh straight win over ASU, 15th in a row in the conference, as the D allowed just 10 points in that second half. 41-27, the Ducks go to 5-1 in the first half of the season. Before he left, Darren Thomas threw for a touchdown in his 19th straight game. He has started, every game he has started, 536 total yards. 327 of those rushing for the Ducks, 269 in that second half. Career highs for Barner, 171 on 31 carries. 73 yards on the ground for DeAnthony, another 65 by Bennett, game high 203 all purpose for DeAnthony. And afterward, Darren Thomas said he could have come back. You don't yeah. need him when you're up by a couple of scores and says that he will like to probably will be available for Colorado, but not sure if they necessarily need him either. Yeah, certainly not. Mark, all the talk after this game was about the offense and the replacements, but let's not forget the defense in this game. 10 points in the second half and really start to put the clamps down on Brock Osweiler, who can sling it around. Yeah, I think this platooning is really working for Oregon. It's really letting these guys come out fresh in the second half and doing a good job and, uh, and getting better and stronger as the game goes along. Yeah, and as we saw the second half move along, John Boyette here on third and two with a nice breakup. Oh, the kid's just a, he's a ball hawk. Whatever he does, however he does, it's full speed. And, and he's, he sets that tone in the back. He's, yeah. He's bringing it. He's been doing that for uh, two and a half years now. And then DeWitt Stuckey happens. He almost gets a pick right there. And then the next play we see, delayed blitz. Great call from Nick Aliotti and his defensive staff here. Um, getting pressure on a quarterback. If you let him sit back there, he's going to pick you apart. And then more problems for Osweiler as, as uh, Deion Jordan here just off the edge. That's just pure speed. Just doing a phenomenal job of playing that outside position, that hybrid position for the defense for the Ducks. And Osweiler having to shake it off there a little bit. I mean, it was, uh, I think, obvious as the game went along that they were starting to take him out of his rhythm a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it was obvious that it also showed that uh, that freshness and that these guys kept bringing it every down, every play, and kept coming with the emotion and, and, and having the fresh legs with the platooning that they do. All right. Now the Ducks have to head out on the road to Colorado next week. We'll see how they do. And Coming off their first win of the season, the Beavers would have liked nothing more than to close out a very disappointing first half of the season with win number two. The Beavers' last non-conference home game hosting 4-2 and two BYU and former Oregon State safety Bronco Mendenhall in the house. He's now the head coach of Brigham Young, played under Dave Craigthorpe and was the defensive coordinator under Jerry Pettibone. The former coach presented the game ball. First possession of the game for BYU, Michael Elisa. This guy's a load. 10-yard run, running over tacklers, 7-0, the only scoring of the first quarter. We go to the second quarter. The Beavs in the red zone, but it proved to be a struggle once again. Sean Mannion picked off by Kyle Van Noy at the 7. He returns it 43 yards, and Brigham Young is in business. And the Cougars take advantage. Riley Nelson, the pitch to J.J. DeLuigi. No Mario needed on this day. Makes it 14-zip for the road team. The next Beaver drive saw a lot of Marcus Wheat. Mannion hits him for three first downs of 16 yards or more. This one 26 yards down to the BYU four. And two plays later, Mannion just goes with the pile on the quarterback sneak as he rolls over and in. Beavers on the board, down 14-7. Then the defense struck with the game's first big play. Riley Nelson out of shotgun to throw. Gets it out and it's picked off. 
Jordan Poyer down the left sideline. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Beavers! Mike Park from the Beaver Sports Network. Jordan Poyer with his Pac-12 leading third interception of the year. Makes it 14 all at the half. Third quarter, Riley Nelson. Match game, 12 yards to Cody Hoffman. BYU back in front, 21-14. Hoffman had a huge day. The Beavers had three turnovers on three straight possessions in the third, an interception and two fumbles, including Malcolm Agnew, who made his return from the bad hamstring, but only this Colby Prince miscue led to points. They got off light. A BYU field goal made it 24-14, but Manning and the Beavs battled back. We hadn't seen much yet from Brandon Cooks, but the speedy freshman Hauls in a 59-yard laser from Mannion, his first career score, 24-21, BYU after three. Early in the fourth, BYU begins to pull away. Riley Nelson to DJ to JD Falsley, two-yard score, 31-21. This from a team that averages just 18 points a game. And after Trevor Romain missed his second field goal of the game, a 48-yard of the Cougs put it on ice. Nelson play action to Kanika Friel, eight yards and yet another deflating loss for the Oregon State program. 38-28, the Beavers finished the first half of the season one and five. Manning with the two picks, but he reached 300 yards passing, so make that five straight with 200 or more. They'd love to get some consistency again in that run game. Agnew was back with just 10 carries, 49 yards, and a fumble. Wheaton, his best game of the year, eight catches, 104 yards, while Cooks, three catches for 90, his best game so far as a Beaver. But Riley Nelson did do it all. The BYU quarterback led a 282-yard ground attack with 87 of his own rushing yards. The Beavers just 59 net yards as a team. Nelson did whatever he pleased. The guy who entered the season as the backup finished 17 of 27 for 217. That play action and the scrambles. Love when the quarterback does this right into the teeth of your defense. Loses his lid. Barks back at Ryan Murphy on that first scoring drive. And boy, Nelson pulled it down 12 times and more than 7 yards per clip. And it was big on some third downs to the Cougars. 11 of 14 on third down. Going for 20 yards on the third down in the opening drive of the game. Then in the lead for good here in the open drive of that third quarter. They made some turnovers, three of them, but Nelson got things right in the red zone. Six of six, only one field goal. The Cougars average only 116 yards on the ground. Through their first six games, they certainly eclipsed that. 282 rushing, 499 total yards against that Oregon State defense where we've seen some stars, we've seen some problems, and they were really dinged up. Five guys go down. You're looking at Castro Masaniai, who can eat up so much base. You lose him. Taylor Henry goes down. Cam Collins goes down. Lance Mitchell wasn't completely healthy either. Fetty Unga goes down in this game, which certainly allowed BYU to kind of do whatever they wanted. But Oregon State, again, just trying to find the right mix of things offensively and defensively to get things right. Yeah, Masani I going down. I think uh, we were starting to see Oregon State uh, do some things up front, but other than Masani I, Oregon State really has no space-eating type defensive lineman up front, and that was uh, kind of a big blow to the Beavers' hopes in this game. In front of a record crowd of 60,055, Oregon won its 20th straight game at Autzen. Still to come on ITP, more from Oregon as the Ducks had to put the game in the hands of a couple of capable backups. He, he drove the ball way easier than me when I seen him driving the ball. He had two, two drives that went straight down the field and did a great job managing the game. I think he's showing good, positive things. Plus, it was a chance for the Cougs to see how far they've come and how far they have still to go, taking on Stanford. And as always, Lots more Beavers, Ducks, and the rest of the Pac-12 online all the time at our website, InsideThePack.com. We're back after this.